Hey everybody, special thanks to our sponsor, Kinetic Impact Airsoft, and their upcoming event, Corporate War with Blood Money 2. It's going to be at D14 Airsoft in Sanger, Texas, April 14th, 2024. If you use the link in the description below and code MUDDY down there, you will get $5 off your ticket every time you use the code, and every time someone purchases a ticket, it does go to help the channel, which is going to be awesome, beneficial for me, and Kinetic Impact also helps you to get a discount for the event. Do you like the idea of a milsim light event if you're new to the milsim world and you're new to events and you don't want to do a 40-hour slog fest this is going to break you off definitely give these guys a look i think you're going to have a great time again use code muddy at the link below five dollars off now on to the review hey everybody welcome to the muddy reviews today we're reviewing a belt system belt system this is the gbrs uh, group belt this is the assaulter belt system this is our new version three belt i got the extra large because as a uh, Cole and DJ were saying in their video, um, you got to make sure you're getting the right size, and uh, don't be vain. No vanity here. Can't always rely on your pant size. It's, it's probably not correct, because as they've discovered, uh, they wear like 34 jeans, and they're really 36s. I am not nearly a 34 or a 36, and I went with the extra large because I needed the space, turns out, because that is not what's going on with me. So, I thought I could get away with the large. Extra large looks like it's the way to go, and it looks to be spot on. This belt is pretty neat. I like that they broke away from their original sizing. Their Gen 2 belt, it was a three-part system. It was an inner belt, and then they had this uh, sheath thing they were doing, and then they had their other belt. Uh, they've gone away with that. They're back to this two-piece system, inner belt, outer belt, and then now they're doing a four-stage sizing, so they're doing small, medium, large, extra large. Also like that, too. It's all about molly columns. That's kind of how the sizing works. How much volume you got, etc. How long it is, yada yada yada. A lot of adjustment spacing, a lot of variation of sizing going on with all the different sizing. Could I have used a large? Probably, but I wanted to give myself enough excess wiggle room to adjust onto and over uh, cold weather gear, etc. Enough of that. Enough of the sizing. Let's talk about the actual belt itself. So this is the inner. Pretty big. Pretty cool. So they are doing hook on the inner belt and then loop on their outer belt but the inner belt is reversible this is kind of neat so you kind of flip it around and it's scuba webbing on the outside and they've got this little loop piece here so you could wear it as an edc belt like that with the scuba webbing facing out so you can just wear it as an everyday edc pants belt it's rigid enough to hang a holster off of if necessary inside the waistband even an outside the waistband, tuck a knife in here. On their video, GBRS group did on YouTube. I'll actually link the GBRS group video in the description below so you can see what, how they were talking about this whole system. It's pretty uh, fascinating. It's a very informative video. They were just going into the ins and outs uh, why. One of the things he was showing is talking about when it's even in your pant loops, if the loops are big enough, it was kind of designed that you can just flip it around like that inside of your loops while you're wearing it to get to the hook portion. They just go with a smaller hook pattern, so it's not gonna catch easily on clothing and shirts and stuff, but it will adhere to the loop or pile portion on the belt just fine and has good adherence. That's what they were saying. So they went with a much smaller tooth on the uh, hook piece here, but still went with that. That's their whole thought process behind it. I will tell you know now I have not worn this a ton yet. This is still a new belt to me. So I don't know how well that whole thought process really is as far as uh, how well it works in in a uh, reality and practice versus theory, but I would would like to say I kind of would think those guys being former uh, SMU dudes would have really thought something out before they bring it to uh market into fruition. Uh, inner belt's pretty cool. Outer belt. The outer belt is nice. Kind of why I wanted to go with this. It's a little different than what I've been running. That's a different design. This is my first Tegris reinforced one one point seven five inch belt. It is using a Cobra buckle, as you can hear and see. It is the uh, Cobra Austro Alpine buckle? It's a real one. This does have the D ring. Uh, I have to double check and see if their belts are actually Hurst load rated. I believe they are, but I'm going to double check that, and I will, next four, next phase here, we'll have a, either we'll have something pop up here on the video that shows that either yes or yes or no is load rated. 
uh, when we do the editing or something to that effect. Here on the Tigris, it does tell you GBRS group, tells you the belt sizing. This is the extra large that's hidden underneath the actual D-ring. And the D-ring is just kept on here by some one wrap. I do like that. It's a nice little way of kind of keeping the D-ring away. It just kind of tucked away, quiet and simple, well thought out. As far as the Tigris reinforcements and the Molly, so you've got like a scuba webbing, heavy stitching. Judging by the stitch pattern that is down in here, mind you, I am not a super hardcore expert by any means, but just having worn a lot of rigorous belts and load rated belts in my time, judging by what I'm seeing here, I think this might actually be load rated just by what I'm seeing, but I'd have to double check and look. And the reinforcements, it does look like it might be. But the belt itself does look really good. It is extremely rigid for what it is. The tickets reinforce them is nice. I, I do like that. You've got this very nice, looks like gross grain coverage on top and bottom of the tickets reinforcement. And then that is a separate piece, outer sheathing above the actual webbing. And then that's all stitched down. So that kind of forms like a, a two-ply sandwich, if you will, as you can see. And that runs the entire length of the belt here. And it goes all the way, and then it terminates here at the other end. And then you've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about eight, nine channels left of adjustment to kind of go all the way out to your bitter end of the belt. And that's where you kind of put it back in through your Cobra buckle. It is a little difficult to adjust initially. As they were saying, that is intentional to make it. Once you get it in and it bites in, it's going to hold and it's not going to slip. The reason I have it already done like this is because I am going to be putting a holster on it here in a few. So I can get it ready to do some testing and some wear, some further wear testing and kind of mess with it off the table. This is just the initial opening phase of this review. Just to kind of give you guys a look at the belt as it stands completely slicked out without anything on it. Before I start adding shit to it and start running around with it on. And giving you guys an idea of what it looks like loaded up on my body and me goofing around with it. The whole inside of the belt is loop lined and that runs all the way from this little bitter end adjustment point all the way to the other side where the heavier duty like sewn down portion is and the sewn in portion of the Cobra box. So yeah, what we're going to do now is I'm going to take this belt, I'm going to add the holster to it. And I'm going to start adding some other parts and bits and bops. We're going to put it on. I'm going to mess with it. I'm going to shoot some uh, video of me actually wearing it and messing around with it. And you can see me in all my puffy glory <laughs> running a uh, pistol and just kind of seeing how this belt fits and looks on a, a healthy, chonky fellow like myself. So for all, for all my big boys out there, you'll get an idea of what one of these belts looks like in the XL and for all you big fellas. Anyway, so yep, stand by for that. All right, we're outside. I've got the GBRS belt on. I've got it all put together now. As you can see, it's not too bad. You know how it fits on my ample, my ample frame. Not a bad belt, I do like it. Got it on there, Velcro inner belt. I ran this belt the entire Veterans Day weekend uh, when I played at D14 Airsoft in Sanger, Texas. I ran it with a belt pad from HSGI, though I didn't run it with the inner belt. Still a great belt. It was very comfortable. Got Safari Land on here. And I'm going to run the Faro Man Couch because I've got the uh, GRS ISAC on. Very stable belt. It's very rigid. feels good. One more quick turnaround. You kind of get a good look at it. I like the buckle. I like the interface. Definitely make sure you get the right size. Like DJ from GBRS says, if you've seen their video, uh, your pant size is vanity. Don't go by that. Definitely measure yourself. If I'd gone by what I normally would wear, what I thought I'd wear by my pant size, going by their sizing, I would have got the wrong size belt. I'm mean, really glad I kind of really gauged it out and got the right size belt. Uh, real quick, I'm going to show you the inner belt so you guys kind of see it. So this is the inner belt right now. Uh, their system, like I talked about already. It is a loop on here, and it's hooked here, 
And if you've seen their video, my DJ talks about it, you can flip this around inside your loops. Takes a little practice. If you can flip it to the scuba webbing side and turn this into an EVC belt, it wasn't too difficult. First couple times I tried, I was like, oh, hell no. I was like, what is he talking about? But it's not too bad. I actually do like it. I've been wearing this as my EDC belt and my everyday pants belt for a while now. I do like it quite a bit. I will say the entire, the entire in, in, inner hook can snag up on your pants and make a pile a little bit. You'll see that uh, later, but not too bad. I do like the belt. It's very rigid. It's good to go. Anyway. Let's go back inside. We'll finish talking about this belt. All right, guys, we're back at the table. Final takeaways for this review. I got the belt off, as you can see, and inner belt's off, too. We have a third thing here. This is the HSGI padded inner belt. I did mention this outside. So I've reviewed these already on the channel. A little card will pop up. You'll check this out. These are pretty great. So this one is hook inside, so it'll interface with the GBRS belt. The other one I reviewed is the reverse of that because it was meant for the every other belt I own. These are a great addition to these belts or any belt you have of this style if you don't want to run the inner belts they come with, just so you know. The shirt grips are fantastic. Anyway, I wanted to point that out because I did talk about it. I like the belt. I don't dislike it. This is a high quality belt. Stitching is fantastic. Materials are fantastic. It's a well-made belt. If I remember correctly, unless they've changed, these things are OEM'd by LBT. LBT makes fantastic stuff. With that being said, I don't really like velcro inner belt on my actual uh, load carriage belt kind of forgot about that because i had a tyr that was the same way it was the velcro loop inside with a hook inner belt like this and i switched to the reverse i had gotten belts that were hook on the inside of the outer belt and it was velcro uh, inner i think i like that better personally most of every other belt i own is the total mirror opposite of this the gbrs belt is very rigid it holds its own very well. The Tigris is very nice. Um, I don't have a Bison. I have not tried one of those yet. Most of the belts I have tried are of the older scuba webbing design where the webbing was dipped in the, um, I think it's like a lam laminate type material to harden and stiffen the webbing. So of course, that it's like a resin. And that resin does break down over time. So the belts lose some of their stiffness and yada, yada, yada. This Tigris is a game changer. It keeps the stiffness and it totally changes the entire landscape of belts so that is great but with that being said i think i like my aws a lot better if i had this over to do again i probably would have just got a second aws belt for this build instead of this belt the inner belt is great it is super rigid i do like the idea of it's this scuba webbing external that you can wear as an EDC. I have been wearing this for the last month as an EDC belt. And then the Velcro, you can literally flip it around even while you're wearing it. And now it's your work belt and you can just Velcro this belt to it. Personally, the inner belt, again, I would much rather have a loop because this, even though they did go with a much finer toothed hook, it is a little rough, especially on this leading edge here. This can get abrasive on your skin when you're wearing it for a long duration. And as you see, they talked about how it doesn't really grab on your clothes as much. I mean, it doesn't. Too bad. As you, like t-shirt. It's not grabbing on it like a normal hook would. However, comma, as you can see here, there is fabric material. There is like some stuff in here. That's from my jeans. It does grab and pull on denim after wearing it all day. You can see it all through here. It has kind of torn up the waistline of my jeans a little bit. Not a crazy amount, but enough. See, there's some denim right there. This is all stuff I pulled off of it just during this review. So every time I wear this belt as an inner belt with scoop webbing out, it just frays up my jeans a little bit. So I like it though. It's a great belt, man. It will, I could hang a gun off this thing, no problem. I can hang all sorts of shit off this thing, no problem. So it is a great inner belt. I just wish it was loop and um, scuba webbing, not hook and scuba webbing. End of the day, I think it's a fantastic belt. I don't know if the V3 is for me. I'm not going to totally bend it. I'm going to keep running it for a little bit. But like I had already said at the beginning of this, if I had it to do over again, I probably would have gone with the AWS lab 
again like I have in multicam, mainly because I've really kind of become fond of this this one wrap method of mounting on these belts and with the loop internal of this belt and the one wrap when you're putting your belt and you're marrying it with the velcro it can actually start to pull this one wrap off when you go to remove your belt it can start to do that and now you're yanking your shit apart and that's not cool it's not as fun it doesn't do that with the other way i don't know why it's doing it but it is so that's not great because I know with my dump pouch, I have to, the best way here is to one wrap mount it. And with this Soil Leader TQ pouch, it's one wrap mounted also only. So if those start coming off, those pouches are going to come off the belt. Anyway, that is it, guys. I hope you got something out of this review. You know, as always, get out there, play some airsoft, be a bunch of nerds, build yourself some cool first line belts. If you're not into airsofting, or even if you are airsofting, but you're going to do some other flat range stuff, get out there and train, get faster, stronger, become deadly, LARP smarter, not harder, and hopefully I'll see you on the field. Peace.